Hello and welcome back or welcome if you are new here. My name is Justina. Welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. So here in today's video, I'm going to look at uh, each um, zodiac sign. This is uh, your horoscope for May 2024. It's one long video, so you can check the timestamps or the chapters if you want to jump straight into your horoscope. In this horoscope, in this video more specifically, I will look at the major events happening in May 2024. And then throughout May, I will release more videos. So we will look deeper into specific uh, events and, and, and alignments in the sky here. Today, I'm going to give you a larger, well, a larger or a wider perspective here upon your life in May 2024. I follow Western Astrology Tropical Zodiac. And here we are going to look at Pluto Retrograde that starts on the 2nd of May at 2 degrees of Aquarius. Then I will also discuss uh, the beautiful new moon in Taurus um, taking place uh, on the 7th, 8th of May at 18 degrees of Taurus. We've got also a beautiful full moon in Sagittarius on the 23rd of May at 2 degrees of Sagittarius. And finally, another huge event following Jupiter and Uranus conjunction in Taurus uh, that took place on the 21st of April. We've got another big event of 2024, and that's Jupiter moving into Gemini. Right. So here, if you want to jump straight into your horoscope, uh, go for it. Uh, you've got chapters and uh, below this um, video, there are chapters, there are timestamps. Right, so without uh, delaying it further, let's begin. All right, so hello Aries and welcome to your May 2024 horoscope. It's a very different month to April. In April, there was a lot about you, your identity, your goals, your desires, your persona, your career perspectives uh, and uh, your family dynamics as well with that solar eclipse uh, in Aries, of course, lots of healing of the self, of... Um, any uh, wounding uh, memories and uh, you're probably also moving away, shifting away from, from the old patterns uh, as you welcome new opportunities and new energies into your reality. Now, on the 2nd of May, we've got Pluto Station in retrograde. We are now in the Taurus season. Here, the initial weeks of uh, May, there is a lot happening in your financial sector. You will be making either some major this financial decisions, financial transactions. Perhaps there could be some changes connected to your income, your business. And uh, this is also when you also will go under, go through a major shift as you move away or um, drift away from the old ways of handling or dealing with money and as new things and opportunities come your way. All right, so first of all, Pluto will be retrograde from the 2nd of May until the 11th of October. Now, Pluto stations retrograde every single year. It's not something new or unusual. Now, this particular retrograde will end in the sign of Capricorn. And here, this will be the final, final visit, uh, Pluto's visit uh, in Capricorn until it moves into Aquarius and stays there for about 20 years. So when Pluto stations retrograde, you are unlikely to feel its energy or the energy of this retrograde instantly. This is an outer planet, a very, very slow moving planet, a dwarf planet even. So here its influence uh, is, is, is going to take some time to, to be fully understood and it will last until the 11th of October. Pluto is connected to transformation, regeneration, death and rebirth. Uh, Pluto brings a lot of uh, intense and transformative energies wherever it, it goes and now it's in your area of long-term goals, plans, hopes uh, and also anything to do with friendships and I think you are already or you have been and you will be undergoing major shifts of energy changes in your social circle groups that you belong to as well. Perhaps you'll be creating your own tribe or you have started already. When Pluto stations retrograde here on the 2nd of May until the 11th of October, you've got this amazing opportunity to look deeper at your friendships, connections in your life, groups you belong to. And this is when you will see things from a very different light in the upcoming months. During this time, you might realize that some people in your life, some connections are not beneficial. And perhaps this could be also about 
redefining your stand within your social circle. Perhaps some people might leave your life, but at the same time, you're making space for new people, connections to, uh, to, to, to arrive. With Pluto in the 11th house, you seek deep and profound connections of people who are like-minded, people with similar beliefs, but at the same time, or points of view, at the same time, this is when you will be redefining your goals, your hopes, your dreams for the future. And this is very much the case since the North Node is now in your first house. You are realigning yourself with your purpose, with the help of Pluto in the 11th house as well. All right, so on the 7th, 8th, we've got um, a new moon in Taurus. A new moon occurs when the sun and the moon meet at the same sign, in the same, at the same degree, in the same sign. This is the beginning of a new lunar cycle. You know, I love looking at the gestation lunar cycle. So you're looking at something bigger, something that has a two years and seven months potential to grow, to develop as well. So a new moon in your second house. This new moon is at 18 degrees. And if you have any placements at around 18 degrees of Taurus, or you, if you are born around this time as well, then this coming year will bring some new opportunities into your life, a new chapter most likely as well. Now here, this new moon connects with uh, Uranus in Taurus. And we've got also Jupiter is still in Taurus at this point as well. Now, this, this new moon occurs at a similar degree to Jupiter and Uranus conjunction that took place uh, on the 21st of April. So I think we are kind of following with similar energies and uh, whatever has been triggered, initiated around April, it could take a different turn or an unexpected turn around this new moon. Overall, there are some new beginnings coming up for you in the financial sector, whether this is a new job, new career, new source of income, or perhaps um, a different approach to save money, to make money. This is this will depend on your life circumstances. But here with Uranus, expect the unexpected. So go with flow, but also plant some seeds that would help you to Build a more secure future. I really like this new new moon, especially since with that Uranian energy. There could be some really surprising uh, news coming up for you as well. But at the same time, perhaps you will be also stimulated to make some investments or to make some purchases. Proceed with caution. Don't let uh, that Uranian energy to, to make you act on impulse. But other than that here, we've got this lovely energy that starts something new in your financial sector. Now on the 23rd, we've got um, a Sagittarius full moon. In the meantime, Mercury and Venus will move. Mercury will move into Taurus, into your second house, but Venus will move into Gemini. So here at the time of this full moon, as it full moon occurs, We've got Venus and Jupiter conjunction in Gemini at a very, very light degree. Overall, when Venus and Jupiter conjoin, this brings really amazing energies, opportunities, and some great potentials here. Whether this is uh, and, uh, some good feedback, good news, or perhaps you'll be signing a new contract, or this could be about some financial opportunities coming your way a purchase, a sale. But at the same time, the ruler of this full moon is Jupiter. Jupiter is at a very late degree of Taurus. There is a sense of culmination here. A full moon brings a matter connected to anything to do with your purpose, anything to do with some legal documents, legal matters as well. Anything to do with your need to expand your horizons, to be independent. But here, the, the ruler of this full moon is at that energetic degree. It gives us this now or never feeling. So there is this feeling of urgency, having to act immediately. So perhaps this is about um, either having this strong desire to attend to a matter that is about to come to a culmination. There is this 
Or perhaps you are going to feel like you need to take this opportunity that emerges around this time before it's too late. So there is this feeling of urgency now or never feeling, having to complete something before it's too late, this kind of dynamics energy. So here with a full moon in Sagittarius, this could be when you'll be completing your studies, a course of study. This could be also about perhaps your passport or visa application, finally, finally moving forward. Or perhaps this could be about um, you launching a business, you launching a coaching business, or perhaps publishing, getting your work, getting your words out into the open. Now, travel, foreign travel is also highlighted here. There is something connected, some kind of energy that really, really stimulates you to expand your horizons, your wisdom, set you free on this new journey or something fresh in a way, since this is a very early degree of this full moon. Now, we end the month with um, Jupiter moving into Gemini on 25th of the month. And here, Jupiter will stay in Gemini until the 9th of uh, June 2025. Gemini is your third house with Jupiter in Gemini. And interestingly, Pluto is now in your 11th house retrograde during this initial phase of Jupiter's transit in Gemini. Here we've got another indication of um, you probably expanding your social circles. I think there will be a shift of energy as you will be maybe moving away from certain people, connections in your life. Different kind of energies will enter your life. This is about um, expanding your connections within your immediate environment. Now, a relocation is sometimes also possible even temporary under that Jupiterian energy. Overall, with Jupiter in the third house, this is connected to a lot of movements, travel. And uh, I remember when I had Jupiter's transit in my third house a couple of years ago, I was studying a lot. So it's like, it's like you're craving, craving knowledge and it, you absorb knowledge very easily. So if you've been wanting to learn astrology or something else that uh, generally is of your interest, Jupiter in Gemini is an amazing, amazing time for doing so, taking short courses, studying, absorbing knowledge, because generally you've got this massive uh, opportunity to learn very quickly or within a um, short amount of time, but a lot of, a lot of information. You absorb knowledge quickly and easily, and you're very keen to, to learn and expand your horizons. Now, at the same time with Jupiter in a third house, this can also help you to express yourself more authentically. Now, with Jupiter in a third house, you could be also teaching, launching uh, a business uh, of your own. But here, this is connected to teaching or coaching, tutoring. This is also the case. Perhaps you'll be working abroad temporarily. An opportunity could, could uh, emerge, for example, to, to teach um, your native language in a foreign land. Overall here, this is also when uh, generally you will be... Mm, you have lots of opportunities for traveling, but traveling within your county or country, for example. And um, would you be in a third house? So this is also when your relationship with your um, siblings, relatives could, um, or even neighbors could um, expand. Now, for those who are involved in jobs connected to journalism or sales, here, Jupiter can also promote growth and, and, and uh, expansion, new opportunities. Maybe you'll be writing your book. If you've been wanting to write, if you've been wanting to have a podcast, then here with Jupiter in the third house, you can make it happen. You can make it work. All right. So here, a little update for you, Aries. I wish you a productive month and let's move into the next sign. Hello Taurus and welcome to your May 2024 horoscope. So we are now fully established in Taurus season and happy birthday to all Taurians. Now we uh, we start the month with Pluto, the planet of transformation, regeneration, death and rebirth, stationing retrograde at two degrees of Aquarius on the 2nd of May. And this retrograde will end on October the 11th in the sign of Capricorn. This will be the final entry of um, Pluto into Capricorn. And after that, Pluto will move into Aquarius, where it will stay for about 20 years. Now, Pluto is currently in your 10th house of um, career, 
your status, professional life. It's not just career and professional life, but whenever we change our status, whether we become parent, whether we become engaged, married, or divorced, then this is also influenced by major transits and energetical influences in the upper part of our chart. Now, Pluto is the planet connected to regeneration, death and rebirth, transformation. Pluto brings a lot of intensity. And here with Pluto being retrograde, you are unlikely to feel this retrograde instantly. Pluto is an outer planet. It's a very slow moving dwarf planet. It will take some time to fully, fully, um, to help us to fully understand what this retrograde is truly about. Now, of course, it will help you to see your career life, your professional life from a very different light and perspective. Now, this is a very significant retrograde happening in your 10th house. The 10th house is an angular house, a house of strength, but also it has a lot of significance and importance upon our life. So here we've put a retrograde in your 10th house. You might have this need to step back at some point here during the duration of this retrograde. Step back and reassess your career. Now, if you're not moving in the right direction, if there is something that you missed or overlooked in the last few months, since especially since Pluto entered Aquarius, then it will become very visible and apparent during this retrograde phase. Now, here during this time, you might be breaking away from any old patterns, or perhaps you'll be moving away from some old goals, ambitions, things that perhaps are superficial, unrealistic, they will no longer appeal. It's all about redefining your stand, eliminating what isn't needed, because Pluto is very much connected to elimination. So it's all about eliminating what is not needed, what is no longer needed, in order to make space for a positive transformation to occur. Because, of course, it's a very transformative time for you when it comes to your career stand, when it comes to your professional life as well, but anything to do with your status. Now, if you are already retired, then this could also mean that perhaps you will be involved or you could have an opportunity to be involved in some kind of public role, whether this is volunteering, whether this is uh, some kind of uh, community work, whatever it is, this kind of opportunities might come up here during the retrograde phase as well. So it's all about finding your own path. It's all about uh, realizing what fits in in this current reality and what doesn't. Now on the 7th, 8th, we've got a new moon in the sign of Taurus. Amazing new moon, fresh, great energies at 18 degrees. So have a look if you have any placement at around 18 degrees of Taurus. This is very significant because if your birthday falls around this time, or around this degree, well, not birthday, but if your son is at around this degree, then this coming year will be very, very significant for you. You will be starting a brand new chapter. Now, this is happening at 18 degrees. The Jupiter and Uranus um, conjunction that occurred in April, that was at 21 degrees. So this new moon could trigger some of the energies that were already initiated back in April. But at the same time, some new beginnings connected to your identity, to your persona, to your goals, to your career. Now with Pluto being retrograde in your 10th house, perhaps this is about some uh, career-related um, potentials, opportunities as well. But it's all about you, your desires, your needs, your hopes, your wishes. We had the full moon in Scorpio on the 23rd, 24th of April, that was about one-to-one -one connections, your relationships with others, partnerships. This new moon is about you. What is it that you want? What is it that you want to implement and begin and start in your life? Now, we've got Uranus uh, tightly aligned with this new moon. So there is an energy of uh, something happening quickly, unexpectedly out of the blue. So remain flexible and be open to new opportunities coming your way. It's an amazing uh, time for new intentions, for setting uh, new intentions, for setting new goals. Perhaps you'll be starting a new business, a new hobby, a new project, a new interest. Perhaps you'll be reinventing yourself, changing your style. 
this could be very much the case as well. You might be craving something fresh and new, unique, original, eccentric even as well. All right, so then moving forward, we've got a full moon in Sagittarius on the 23rd. And um, here, just so you know, that uh, Mercury will, will leave the post-shadow period on the 13th of May. So you can take a deep breath post that date as well. That's on a side note. And we've got a full moon in your eighth house of transformation, regeneration, death and rebirth, deep and profound matters happening on the 23rd. And this full moon will sextile transformative Pluto in Aquarius in your 10th house. And Pluto is retrograde as well. So that's really inter interesting. That generally, this full moon has a lot of twists. And um, first of all, it's happening at two degrees of Sagittarius, so a very early degree. So this already tells us about something fresh, even though a full moon is not about some new beginnings. It's about something that has already been planted, um, started in the past. And during the full moon, things become more visible and we have this greater awareness about this early degree of the full moon could in, indicate that perhaps um, you have a fresh idea in regards to how to deal with a certain matter. Here again, this could be about your financial situation, any investments uh, you may have. Perhaps uh, you're selling or buying a piece of land or a property, or perhaps you're taking a loan or renewing your uh, your loan more specifically, or perhaps it's about healing, about going on a detox, uh, about fasting, purifying your um, your body in, to a certain degree, healing as well. So whatever it is, you will know best, uh, but we've got a sex to, to Pluto and Aquarius. So there could be some empowerment as well that comes into um, play. Now, here we've got a full moon. So yes, the full moon is an early degree of uh, Sagittarius to degrees. Sextile Pluto, the ruler of this full moon is Jupiter at an anaretic degree of uh, Sagittarius conjunct Venus. What's going on? Lots of um, energy that tells us as well that there is this now or never feeling. You need to complete something before you move into this brand new phase and chapter as Jupiter uh, changes signs on the 25th. Here, this full moon could be about breaking away from some negative cycles that uh, perhaps negatively contribute into your financial sphere. Perhaps uh, you will be, perhaps this is about uh, generally finding, finding a way to not to get into debt or not to go over your credit card limit. Now, this could be also about some unexpected uh, opportunities of a transformative and empowering nature that will come through your career. Perhaps uh, for some, this could be about a potential bonus or a commission or an opportunity for, for one of these uh, financial potentials, for example. Now on the 25th, Jupiter will move into Gemini, where it will stay until the 9th of June, 2025. So here, this is your second house with Jupiter in the second house. Very often, this is a time of financial growth, opportunities, prospects as well. So here with Jupiter, Jupiter is connected to growth, abundance. But here with Jupiter, with Jupiter, we need to be realistic, grounded, and have a realistic goals and expectations because it's very easy to overextend oneself. It's very easy to take risks, unnecessary risks, because we feel over-optimistic about a certain goal, idea, whatever it is. So for this reason, set yourself realistic goals, especially around the new moon in Taurus on the 7th, 9th of May. And if those are about something to do with your finances, financial security, stability, as Jupiter moves into your second house of money on the 25th of May, here you can actually take advantage of this transit if you set realistic and achievable goals for yourself for the next 12 months of your life. This could be also connected to a foreign income, for example, Jupiter rules, anything connected to foreign matters as well. So perhaps this could be about either... Um, for about working for an international organization, working abroad, working online on a global scale, for example. Maybe you'll be teaching. Maybe you'll be coaching. This could be about a coaching business. Maybe you will be working um, as a legal secretary or um, a lawyer or a, an attorney, for example, as well. 
And with Jupiter in the second house uh, here, um, there is this amazing opportunity for financial abundance, financial prosperity as well, as long as you take calculated risks during this time. Overall, it's an amazing transit to, to dedicate your time and energy to build that secure and um, especially financially secure life while remaining cautious as uh, the energy of Jupiter can sometimes lead to excess. All right, so we will explore it further in May, but in the meantime, have a good month and let's move into the next sign. Hello, Gemini's, and welcome to your May 2024 horoscope. So here we start the month with Pluto, the planet of transformation, regeneration, Pluto is an outer planet, uh, a dwarf planet, and it will station retrograde on the 2nd of May until October the 11th. Now here, this retrograde will occur in your 9,000 9 house deals with anything to do with foreign places, foreign matters, our life purpose, your belief system, your life philosophy, higher learning, higher education, legal matters. So as you can see, when Pluto stations retrograde, and let's uh, not forget, Pluto is connected to very transformative and intense energy and with Pluto retrograde in your ninth house you will take a very close deep and profound look into your life philosophy your belief system as well and um, during this retrograde phase maybe not initially it might take a few weeks uh, to, to fully fully develop and for you to truly dive deeper into these energies but you will be redefining it seems like you'll be redefining your life philosophy your belief system this is when your worldview might change as a result of different conversations, experiences that you go, go through. It's a, this is a slow process. And let's not forget, Pluto will be in Aquarius in your ninth house for the next 20 years. So it's a 20 years uh, influence. So you gradually, gradually um, taking little steps and um, redefining your life philosophy, your belief system. And here you will be implementing these major changes every time Pluto is in a direct motion. The retrograde phase gives you this opportunity to look at here these um, ninth house th themes from a very close look, so deeply and profoundly. And when Pluto stations direct from the 11th of October onwards, you will be implementing uh, little steps moving forward, little changes as well. Now, this retrograde will actually end in, in a Capricorn. It's going to be a time of awakening of enlightenment for many people. You may find yourself drawn to unconventional, unique spiritual practices. And overall, this retrograde strongly emphasizes the need for growth, the need for personal growth and transformation. It's a time to embrace change and new experiences. So here, the experiences that you go through in the upcoming months will have a huge, huge influence upon your worldview, upon your life principles, upon your belief system as well. Now on the 7th, 8th of the month, we've got a new moon in Taurus happening at 18 degrees in your 12th house of uh, the subconscious mind, of hidden matters, and uh, anything to do with institutions, spirituality. So here, in a way, this is the end of, of a cycle here. Whatever happens in the 12th house is connected to a certain degree of endings, conclusions as well. A new moon is about new beginnings, on the other hand. Uh, this is when the moon and the sun come and meet at the same degree in the same sign. This new moon is happening at 18 degrees of Taurus. So if you have any placement at around this degree, you will be especially, especially influenced by the energy of this new moon. Now, 18 degrees of Taurus is a very similar degree to the degree of the conjunction that occurs on April the 21st between Jupiter and Uranus. So here, I think this new moon will trigger the energies of this um, conjunction, but also we've got Uranus really, really strongly and, and, and deeply involved as it is conjunct this new moon. So expect the unexpected. I think this could mean that your dreams will be very vivid. You might experience a temporary insomnia, 
but at the same time, it looks like your intuition will be super heightened. So take notes and 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 you can do some journaling if you like. Write your wishes or intentions down. It's really essential because I think under that Uranian influence, this could be about having some new and, and interesting ideas, unconventional even, that could help you to move away, drift away from any old patterns, habits, routines that no longer belong in your reality. Remember, at the end of this month, the Jupiter will move into your first house, into your sign. This is the beginning of a new 12, 13 years cycle, and it's going to it's going to be amazing. So here, if there is something that needs to depart from your life, then here this new moon could make it more apparent for you. Without a doubt, you could be fixing your sleeping routine and perhaps finding new ways to deal with certain hidden private aspects of your life that only you are aware of. Now, this new one also connects you to spirituality more profoundly, more deeply as well. Now, on the 23rd, there's a full moon in Sagittarius happening in your seventh house. So full moon is when the moon and the sun are in opposition. The moon is fully visible, fully illuminated in the sky. This full moon is happening at two degrees of Sagittarius, so a very fresh degree. Even though a full moon is not about new beginnings, it's about something that we have already dealt with in the past most likely 18 months ago during the new moon in Sagittarius in 2023. Sorry, two, in 2022. So here during a full moon in your seventh house, this is about your one-to-one -one connections, uh, relationships, uh, contracts you have with other people. It doesn't have to be love. It doesn't have to be marriage. It can, but can be also about one-to-one uh, -one connections, dealings, and, and here Full moon brings a matter connected to these one to one connections, contracts, dealings to light. Now, with a sextile to Pluto in Aquarius in your ninth house, so there is some kind of empowering energy. Perhaps uh, this is a, could be about a, a very empowering connection uh, or relationship, or perhaps um, this could be about even having a very significant, meaningful, empowering session with a coach, psychologist therapist that could generally change the course of your life. So there is a lot of depth that uh, is um, connected to this full moon. But at the same time, this could be about uh, having to make an important decision with your significant other regarding your future. So Deuterius is connected to adventurous, spontaneous energy, but also it is connected to the future. So making future plans or having to make an important decision here connected to your relationship could be very much the case. But at the same time, it could mean that you'll be ending a contract. Something's coming to a culmination here with this full moon because the ruler of this full moon is Jupiter. Jupiter is at an anaretic degree, 29th degree of Taurus. It's a it's like a now or never feeling, having to complete or accomplish something before Jupiter moves into the next sign. So there's this feeling of urgency. So you'll see how it will play out in your life. We'll, we will explore it further in a couple of weeks. The month ends with Jupiter moving into Gemini into your first house on the 25th of May until June the 9th. How amazing. Jupiter in your first house, you're starting a brand new cycle. Now, it's really important to note where, at what degree your ascendant is. Because here, when Jupiter will cross your ascendant degree, this is when you will especially, especially feel the influence of Jupiter in Gemini. So have a look. If it's an, at an early degree, then here you will experience a sense of abundance, lack, growth, opportunities for growth and expansion to a certain extent. If it's at the final degree of Gemini, then this abundant energy will be especially, especially felt next year. So Jupiter brings luck. Jupiter brings abundance, opportunities, as long as we are realistic, as long as we are, we set ourselves realistic, achievable goals. This is very, very important here with Jupiter. With Jupiter, this could be about starting a brand new uh, business or a career. This could be also about starting a new chapter in your life. There is a lot of opportunity here with Jupiter in the first house, but here watch out um, because Jupiter 
not only expand opportunities, but also our physical body. It's very easy to gain weight with Jupiter in the first house. Because um, with Jupiter in the first house, Jupiter is connected to fatty foods. So this could be that you are attracted uh, or you cr you will be craving saucy or um, food that have more calories or are more saucy, saucy or, or fattier. In the f yeah, well, you know what I mean. So that's something to watch out for here during this uh, transit. It's a similar uh, theme with Jupiter on the sun as well, or Jupiter on the moon. Mm, generally, our cravings seem to increase and it's, you know, overindulgence is very much the theme very often as well. But overall, Jupiter in the first house is great. Foreign travel could be very much the theme as well. Beautiful travel abroad, new friendship, new connection, new career. There is so much that you can do, but it's really important to pay attention to where your ascendant is present at what degree, because this is when that uh, lack has, will be especially highlighted here. So thank you very much. Gemini, so we share a pleasant month and let's move into the next sign. Hello, Cancers, and welcome to your May 2024 horoscope. So here we start the month with um, Pluto on the planet of transformation, regeneration, stationing retrograde at two degrees of Aquarius on the 2nd of May until October the 11th. Now, this retrograde starts in Aquarius, it will end in Capricorn. Right, so Pluto will station retrograde at two degrees of Aquarius in your eighth house. The eighth house is traditionally connected to Scorpio. So Pluto feels pretty comfortable here. This is the area of transformation, regeneration, which is what Pluto actually stands for, the modern ruler of Scorpio. Now, during this time, you might have this really strong need and desire to uncover mysteries, to dive deep into int some interests, topics, subjects that perhaps you would find maybe more challenging to dive deep into otherwise. You might become more interested in hidden matters or anything to do with psychology, psychology astrology, death, or generally the topic of mortality uh, would appear, would appeal more um, more than usual. Generally, this retrograde um, suggests a strong need for transformation, regeneration. So you might see yourself moving away from the old patterns, habits, routines that no longer belong in the current reality. Let's not forget Pluto will stay here in this house in your chart for about 20 years. So every time it stations retrograde, you will have an opportunity to see things live from a very different experience light. And every time Pluto is in a direct motion, it will have an opportunity to implement the necessary changes of a very deep and profound nature. So here during uh, the retrograde phase of Pluto, you might have this strong need for transformation, regeneration on a very deep and profound level, possibly through experiences that challenge your deepest fears and insecurities. Now, on the 7th, 8th, on the other hand, we've got uh, a new moon in Taurus happening at 18 degrees. Taurus is a fixed sign. This is your 11th house. So a new moon is about new beginnings. A new chapter is about to begin here in your area of friendships, groups you belong to or that you're planning to join. Anything to do with long-term goals, hopes, plans and wishes. I think here with um, that Taurian influence uh, and also we've just uh, had the Jupiter and Uranus conjunction at 21 degrees of Taurus. This new moon is at 18 degrees. So I think this new moon will trigger the degree of, the, of that uh, conjunction to a certain extent. But at the same time, during this new moon, we've got a conjunction with Uranus. So expect the unexpected. Things could be just taking place out of the blue. And perhaps you will make new connections or form new um, friendships at, around the, this new moon. That could generally occur very spontaneously. Perhaps this could be with someone that you meet either in unusual circumstances or this could be about uh, joining a group of people, a new group, a new tribe that is very different uh, from, from the usual people that you hang around with. So overall here, a new connection, a new friendship, a new 
uh, perhaps uh, a new group that you'll be joining. This could be very much the case. Perhaps you're joining a new organization. This could be about a new role, a new job as well, since we had the um, a solar eclipse in Aries um, back in April. And here the 11th house is connected to big and large organizations. So if you recently received a job offer or a job opportunity, perhaps this new one could be connected to a new environment that you'll be joining, a new organization, perhaps. At the same time, this new month could be also about new intentions, new goals that you'll be setting for yourself. And I think there is a little bit of that unpredictable, unusual energy here as per that Uranian influence. So expect the unexpected, go with the flow, but also don't shy away. Get yourself out there. Take advantage of any opportunities connected to networking, connected to perhaps your participation in a certain event. Because here this new moon will help you to attract like-minded people. If it doesn't happen on the day of the new moon, then this influence can generally influence the whole of May as well. Because, um, because you've got Venus here at this point as well. And Mercury will join the party, so to speak, on the 15th of May as well. Now, on the 23rd, we've got a full moon in Sagittarius. And this full moon will be in your sixth house of health, or maybe more specifically illnesses, work, employment, co-workers, anything to do with your lifestyle, anything to do with your daily routine as well. During a full moon, there is often a need to release, let go things become more visible. There is more clarity very often. Mercury is now out of its post-shadow period as well. You might be changing your lifestyle, moving away from some duties, responsibilities, habits that no longer belong in your reality as you welcome something fresh and brand new, especially since Jupiter is about to enter Gemini as well. So we've got this fresh, fresh energy coming up at the end of the month. But here are a few things to, to pay attention to during this time. First of all, a sextile to Pluto. So perhaps the changes that you will be implementing in your lifestyle, in your daily life, um, in your work environment, they will have a very empowering and positive impact upon your life. A sextile to Pluto in the area of transformation, regeneration could lead to perhaps a feeling of fulfillment to a certain extent as well. But at the same time here, we've got um, also uh, the ruler of this uh, full moon Jupiter is at an anoretic degree, the 29th degree of Taurus. Conjunct Venus, your sixth house ruler. So there is some kind of lack and abundant energy, but at the same time, the analytic decree tells us about the now or never feeling influence, having to attend to a certain matter before it's too late. So there is a little bit of that impatient energy. And uh, I think this is a very beneficial full moon for eliminating what no longer belongs in your daily life, in your reality. But at the same time, perhaps uh, for some Answers. This could be about some positive news regarding your employment, regarding your work, regarding your business, regarding a, a specific client that had a positive impact upon your career growth, for example. So it's a really great full moon to reflect uh, on your priorities and take the necessary steps towards achieving your goals. On the 25th, Jupiter will move into Gemini, where it will stay until the 9th of June, 2025. So this is, an, this is another major event of 2024. Four. Jupiter changes signs uh, every single year and uh, its whole cycle usually lasts around 13 years, 12 to 13 years, more or less. So Gemini, this is your 12th house and you are preparing for this big, big transit when Jupiter moves into your first house. And I'm really excited about it as well since I've got three planets in Cancer, but in the meantime, but in the meantime, Jupiter in Gemini, it's in your 12th house. The good thing about this transit, because it's a 12th house energy, so yes, spirituality, that private area of your life is highlighted. Generally, Jupiter in the 12th house acts as a guardian angel. There's a, generally this energy helps you to thrive in your life. And whatever difficulties that 
you may possibly experience um, following this transit and not because of this transit, but perhaps because of something else happening in your life. Jupiter generally helps you to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So generally, whatever happens in your life when Jupiter is in a 12th house, there is a happy ending, a happy resolution. So you you generally put this protection upon your uh, upon your persona, so to speak. Overall, with Jupiter in your 12th house, this can be a period of growth and expansion in your spiritual and your emotional life. You might start journaling around this time. You might become really interested in spirituality, astrology, meditation, healing, reiki, or anything also to do with law of attraction. So any of these spiritual practices might really appeal very strongly during this time. You might feel more compassionate, more empathetic towards others. Maybe you'll be involved in some charity work, event, volunteering. This is all very much connected to Jupiter's transit in the 12th house. This transit, it's really important to dedicate some time to reflect because it's, it might be very easy to get lost in your own fantasies or delusions. So for this reason, it's really important to find an outlet for your emotions, for your feelings as well during this time. So anything that is connected to creativity, journaling, spirituality, astrology, is generally very beneficial during this time. So I'll explore it further in a few weeks. In the meantime, have a good month and let's move into the next sign. Hello, Leos, and welcome to your May 2024 horoscope. So we start a month with Pluto, the planet of transformation, regeneration, death and rebirth, stationing retrograde at two degrees of Aquarius uh, on the 2nd of May until October the 11th. So this retrograde starts in Aquarius, it ends in Capricorn, and this will be the final entry to Capricorn for a very long time. After that, Pluto will remain in Aquarius for about 20 years. So this is your seventh house, uh, the area of relationships, partnerships, but anything to do with one-to-one -one connections, contracts we have with other people. It can be a fiancé or husband, a partner, a business partner, but also a best friend. Your therapist, for example, could be also um, the seventh house uh, energy or your landlord or your contract with your landlord, for instance, as well. Now, Pluto here in a retrograde motion. It will take some time to probably fully understand what this transit is truly about for you. But uh, because Pluto is an outer uh, planet, it's a dwarf planet, it takes a long time to, to generally move uh, across uh, the whole of the zodiac. Now, Pluto retrograde gives you this massive need for deep, transformative, intense uh, relationships in your life. Pluto retrograde uh, helps you to see things from a very different light, while the direct motions, motion brings uh, transformation, regeneration, big changes in, in how you connect with others, how you see and perceive love. A retrograde phase of Pluto helps you to maybe step back and see your relationships, your relationship dynamics more specifically, from a very different angle. Now, during this time, you might realize that um, you want to maybe distance yourself from certain individuals in your life. This is generally connected also to potential power struggles uh, or some intense um, energies that may come up, may show up during this time. But they are here to, to show you the true colors of the connections in your life. It doesn't mean that they will break away, but maybe the time has come to deal with certain hidden aspects of your relationship that perhaps were overlooked or brushed under the carpet in the past. You might be drawn during this time to people who challenge you on a profound level, whether emotionally, whether intellectually, whether spiritually. You might be also more interested in exploring 
the darker aspects of your relationships to help you understand your own patterns of behavior. So if this is the case, then approach these experience, experiences with caution because the transformative uh, power of Pluto can be both intense and unpredictable, especially in the context of relationships. So on May the 7th, the 8th, we've got a new moon in Taurus happening uh, in your area of um, career, professional life, status, public image. A new moon occurs when the sun and the moon meet at the same degree in the same sign. So we're starting a brand new cycle here, here following uh, the eclipses on Taurus and Scorpio axis that um, ended last year. And we've got a brand new new moon. So a new story developing in your area of career professional life. Now here, the 18th degree of Taurus here, that's the second decan. And we've just had a Jupiter and Uranus conjunction on the 21st of April, 21 degrees of Taurus. So there is so much happening in this area of your life that this is without a doubt an important time for your career, growth, professional development. If nothing has happened yet, then things are definitely uh, going to take a certain degree of turn, especially if you've been trying to make a difference, if you've been trying to implement some changes into your career and professional life path. So here, a new moon at 18 degrees, we've got Uranus very closely aligned with this uh, new moon. So expect the unexpected. That's the Uranian energy. Uranian energy can also make you more rebellious. It can make you want to break away or break free from any restricting um, beliefs, thoughts, limitations that make you feel stuck. So here, Uranus can shake things up. Uranus can generally make you maybe take a more of an unconventional approach to how you want to deal with your career moving forward. So expect the unexpected, go with flow if you can. I know Leo um, and Taurus are both fixed signs, but here Uranus can really shake things up or perhaps bring some unexpected sudden opportunities. Maybe it, it can even happen on the day or the day after. It doesn't have to be in the days leading towards this new moon because it will happen out of the blue. So there is a lot of unpredictable energy. Now, this could be generally, um, this could generally mean that you might have some new and sudden ideas as well of the next step you want to take. So it doesn't have to be that, you know, something will generally turn around like you know on a massive scale it could be as as simple as a sudden flash of intuition a sudden idea that could help you to move forward with a specific career related goal or perhaps it could influence you to change your direction change your mind but at the same time it could be related to external influences or things happening in your uh, organization in your career that are out of your control, whether this is some new rules and regulations uh, being announced uh, by the government on the day, whether this is some major changes, announcements that will be announced by your organization. So this could be generally, you will see how it will play out in your life, but overall Uranus and this new one, they may bring some surprises at the same time. They can encourage you to take charge of your career, especially if you've been feeling stuck, especially if you've been feeling like you don't know which way to go. Here, the Taurian fixed energy is connected to stability, but Uranus is here to shake things up and maybe help you to act differently. But we'll explore it further in a couple of weeks. Now, full moon, there is a full moon in Sagittarius happening on the 23rd of May at two degrees of Sagittarius. It's a really interesting full moon because it's happening at a very early degree of Sagittarius, which is two degrees of Sagittarius. And also we've got the ruler of this full moon is Jupiter and Jupiter is at an energetic degree of Taurus, the 29th degree conjunct Venus. So there is this now or never feeling, a feeling of urgency, a feeling that you have to act now. It's a now or never feeling very often as well. So where is your fifth, um, well, sorry, where is Sagittarius in your chart? That's your fifth house. The fifth house deals with anything to do with children, conception, anything uh, to do with um, young people, teaching as well, sharing your skills, and your talents, but also the creative self-expression is highlighted. Anything to do with romance as well. Okay, so a full moon occurs when the sun and the moon are in opposition, the opposing signs, and the moon is fully illuminated. 
And the, the moon, the full moon brings a lot of clarity, full awareness as well, when it comes to the matters related to the energies uh, resonating in that fifth house. But here, full moon is in the fifth, while the solar point is in the 11th. So this is also about finding that healthy balance between these two areas of life, your groups, hopes, and long-term goals, and also your creative self-expression, the private area of your life. I think this full moon, um, for some people, because with people the sextile to Pluto and Aquarius in your eighth house, I think there is some kind of empowering energy coming up. Maybe you will find the inner strength, the inner lion, I like to say, um, that could help you to express yourself more authentically, more freely as well. In a certain situation, in your life. Maybe this is about some empowering opportunity that could help you to make better progress in your career. Maybe this is connected to a potential conception of family planning. And this is because with the sextile to Pluto in your eighth house of depth, you will experience a greater sense of clarity during this time and a pur and purpose. I think this could be also connected to a certain uh, co um, project that you've been working on taking off. Maybe you're launching your own business. Maybe you want to be self-employed. Maybe you want to be, uh, have your own business, a freelancer or freelancer, that's what I want to say, and you feel more confident about the services that you can offer with your skills. It's all about being more authentic, more free in your um, expression of, uh, of your talents and skills. Maybe this is when you will find your, the inner voice as well. So there is a certain degree of uh, that uh, self-empowering energy that come into um, play. But maybe for some, this could be connected to anything to do with children. Maybe this could be about some empowering news that you might receive from your children. Or perhaps this could be about childbirth, conception, family planning, as I mentioned earlier as well. I think it could be an interesting time to go on a date, to date in general, because of that Jupiter and Venus conjunction that is in Taurus, where Venus feels absolutely amazing. It's an analytic degree. And now or never feeling an energy that uh, generally stimulates you to take risks as well. This, this could be a time of some really intense and emotional transformation and um, creative expression as well. Right, so the final event for the month I want to discuss today is Jupiter in Gemini that starts on the 25th of May and it will last until the 9th of June. So here, Jupiter, Jupiter is the planet connected to lack, abundance, growth, expansion, but also we've got uh, sometimes with Jupiter, if we are not realistic about our expectations, goals, hopes, then sometimes Jupiter can also make us over optimistic and this can lead to negative consequences. Now, this is your 11th house with Jupiter in the 11th house. So this generally really, really positively influences anything to do with um, friendships, meeting like-minded people, joining uh, new clubs uh, or groups. Uh, here with Jupiter in the 11th house, um, you could also be involved in, in some kind of group uh, activity. Maybe you will become a leader of a certain group. Maybe you'll be joining a new organization or perhaps you'll become a teacher or a teacher assistant or a volunteer at school or some kind of large organization. It's all about being surrounded by a large amount of people. Maybe you will be presenting some kind of work. Maybe you will be involved in some kind of um, uh, activity that is connected to um, a specific cause a humanitarian matter. But with Jupiter, Jupiter helps you to grow. Jupiter helps you to, to feel like you're working towards something meaningful, like you're working towards something that has value and is valuable and is um, enlightening in many ways. Now, Jupiter in the 11th house can also help you to achieve some of your goals and hopes and dreams, but just remain realistic. And Jupiter will help you to, to achieve them because Jupiter, it, it, this is the area of lack and, and, and hopes and, and, and uh, good fortune. And with Jupiter, the, the great benefic, Jupiter can really help you to achieve some of your deepest desires and goals as long as you are realistic, as long as you take 
the necessary steps to achieving them. Because we here with Jupiter, we need, need to implement some effort as well. But Jupiter can really, really uh, positively inf uh, influence this area of your, our life. All right, so here we go. Thank you very much, Leos. Uh, have a great month. And let's move into the next sign. Hello, Virgos, and welcome to your May 2024 horoscope. So here this month, uh, Mercury will end its post period on the 13th of May. And Pluto will station retrograde on the 2nd of May until the 11th of October. It will start in Aquarius, it will end in Capricorn, and it will be the final entry of Pluto into Capricorn. After that, Pluto will move into Aquarius and will stay here or there, and more specifically, for the next 20 years. So, right, so Pluto is a planet connected to transformation, regeneration, intensity, profound and deep energies, uh, where here with um, your sixth house. The sixth house deals with matters related to um, any illnesses, potential illnesses, anything to do with um, your work, employment, co-workers, lifestyle, and that everyday um, reality. So your duties, responsibilities, when Pluto is retrograde, here, generally, the influence of this retrograde might actually take some time to fully um, grow and develop because Pluto is an outer planet, it's a dwarf planet. It takes some time, it takes time to, to generally move across the, uh, the whole of the zodiac. And here with Pluto retrograde, you'll be reflecting upon a much deeper aspect of your life, of your everyday routine. I think for many Virgos, this is connected to some potential lifestyle changes that have been occur occurring and also will continue to, to take place. But with Pluto retrograde, you are able to step back and see your everyday life, your work, your relationship with coworkers from a very different angle, very different perspective. It might be that you'll be moving away during this time from some people from your everyday routine, especially the ones that negatively contribute to your lifestyle to your overall well-being. This is also at a time when you might be obsessively researching a certain matter connected to any anything to do with health, anything to do with your diet, the food, the nutrition. You might become really, really interested uh, about health, well-being. Uh, maybe you'll become attracted to any alternative ways to heal and to deal with your health, perhaps something connected to a holistic um, nature, for instance. And I think this will be also when you'll be redefining or modifying some of your daily habits, daily activities as well. So I think there is this big transformation that has already occurred or started when Pluto entered Aquarius for the first time last year. This is a continuation. But... Um, here when Pluto is retrograde or any planet when it's retrograde, we are able to slow down and see things from a very different light. When the planet is in a direct motion, this is when we take action. So here, this is yet again, your lifestyle, your routine, maybe any potential changes when it comes to your diet, maybe any potential changes when it comes to your work, how you work, how you deal with people on everyday basis. All right, so that's here, Pluto and um, Aquarius retrograde. Now, on the 7th, 8th of May, we've got a new moon in Taurus. Taurus is a fixed Earth sign. Taurus rules over your ninth house. The ninth house deals with matters related to foreign places, foreign people, legal matters, legal documents, anything to do with your life principles, your life philosophy as well, your belief system. A new moon is connected to new beginnings. We've had eclipses in this area of life for the last uh, couple of years. They ended last year, and now we've got a brand new chapter coming up for you. You've got Uranus here as well, tightly aligned with this new moon. So expect the unexpected. And generally around the 7th, 8th of May, there could be some really interesting ideas coming through your mind. Listen to your intuition, perhaps say, uh, this could be about um, starting a new course of study, a new um, language course might also appeal, or perhaps a new career, something that connects you to you working uh, perhaps uh, with people from um, different walks, uh, uh, different paths of life, different walks of life, with people from different backgrounds, 
uh, countries, maybe this is about you launching a specific goal project that takes you on a global scale. So here, new careers re related to aviation, travel, uh, foreign matters, import and export related matters, anything to do with legal uh, cases as well, but uh, also anything to do with coaching, astrology. So this sort of um, these sort of careers are here also emphasized, perhaps some new beginnings in this area, um, in these fields uh, more specifically. And overall here, this new moon will occur at 18 degrees. So we had a Jupiter and Uranus conjunction on the 21st of April that has already um, triggered some influences related to these uh, energies connected to spontaneity and that needs to be free, independent and adventurous. Here, this new moon gives you this opportunity for manifesting something that could Gets you closer to your purpose. I think it's a really powerful new moon. Jupiter is still in Taurus. And we've also had Uranus that can generally make you want to act out of the ordinary, break away from the old beliefs, from your old life philosophy, as you implement something brand new and fresh. Now, on the 23rd, we've got a full moon in Sagittarius on the other hand. A full moon occurs when the sun and the moon are in opposition in the opposing sign. So here, the moon will be in Sagittarius, the full moon, and the sun will be in Gemini. That's Gemini season, the very beginning of this season as well. It's a very early degree of this uh, full moon, two degrees. And uh, so this tells us about something um, new and fresh, maybe a new approach to how, how to deal with a certain uh, matter in your life. Now, this is your fourth house. So your home and family related dynamics are especially, especially highlighted here. Sagittarius is a fire sign and Sagittarius is also a mutable sign, same as Virgo. So we've got a sextile to Pluto in Aquarius as well coming uh, to your sixth house. So perhaps you will be um, the, the, the changes, the transformation um, that occurs throughout this time could positively impact your daily life. Perhaps you'll be simplifying your life, changing your routine in order to make your life simpler or generally uh, to make your everyday routine a much uh, easier and uh, more fulfilling experience. But overall here, there's something, there's a matter connected to your home and family dynamics that needs your attention, that needs your energy. So here, think about what happened in your life around 18 months ago in the area of home, whether you started a new project, whether you moved into a new location, whether you signed a new contract with your landlord, whatever it is, here you are dealing with similar energies, but the situation is now fully developed. As I said, it's an early degree of the full moon, so perhaps it's about a fresh approach, fresh situation, a fr and someone um, maybe a new person entering um, your space, in your reality in some way, some kind of involvement of a different individual could be the case here in this case scenario. Uh, the ruler of this full moon is uh, Jupiter and Jupiter is at an analytic degree of um, Taurus, the 29th degree conjunct Venus, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful conjunction fruitful and, and abundant conjunction, but the 29th degree is the um, energy of a crisis, of uh, generally having this feeling of now or never, having this uh, generally um, sensation of having to act immediately before you lose this opportunity. So perhaps you might have this strong need to connect to your roots, to your family. Perhaps you want to create a more nurturing and secure home environment. But you feel like you're running out of time because there has been too much instability at your home for quite some time. At the same time, your daily life, your daily routine is changing. There is a shift of energy. Pluto is here now retrograde as well. Perhaps this could be connected to a possible relocation. Perhaps someone is moving in or out from your home and it will impact your lifestyle, your life generally moving forward. There is some kind of transformative energy here taking place. Now, if you've been renovating your house, usually the full moon is like a peak of a situation. And after the full moon, th things just uh, take a much faster turn. Now here... On the 25th, we've got a, um, Jupiter moving into Gemini, brand new sign, a sign of duality. 
That's your 10th house. Generally with Jupiter in the 10th house, this is not an opportunity to broaden your horizon, to expand your horizon even, to spread your wings. So really, really concentrate on what you want to manifest and achieve in the next year or so. So this transit will last until the 9th of June, 2025. This is your amazing opportunity to move up in your career ladder as long as you are realistic, as long as you take the necessary steps towards achieving your goals. Amazing energy, as long as you are realistic, grounded. Maybe this is about a work, a potential contract abroad, working abroad, even temporarily, working for a um, global organization, launching a business, studying, Perhaps say uh, you'll be undertaking a course of study in order to climb your career ladder. So you will know best how it will play out in your life. But Jupiter generally brings abundant energy that can really, really offer that expansive energy. So don't waste it. It's your career and outside world here in the upcoming 12 months. If you're retiring, this is also a good time for making um, long-lasting plans on how you want to spend your retirement. Perhaps you'll be joining um, specific groups or a club to meet like-minded people. Opportunities are really endless here with this transit. I'll discuss it further very, very soon. But in the meantime, have a good month and let's move into the next sign. Hello, Libras, and welcome to your May 2024 horoscope. This month, Pluto, the planet of transformation and regeneration, will station retrograde at two degrees off. Aquarius. This retrograde will last until October the 11th and it will end in the sign of Capricorn. And this is the final time Pluto will re enter Capricorn because um, next it will move back to Aquarius where it will stay until 2043 um, 44. So around 20 years of this transformative energy in your area of romance, children, creative self expression as well. Who is a planet of transformation, regeneration, then death and rebirth? So here, Pluto is a slow moving planet, it's an outer planet. So it takes some time to fully implement that major transformation in the person's life. So I'm sure you have already felt some of its energy, a little bit of that plutonic taste in this area of your life, especially since here the fifth house deals with the romantic side of life and love, while the seventh house deals with relationships, one-to-one -one relationships, where currently the south node is present, uh, sorry, the north node is present, and also the eclipses are triggering these areas of life. So many Libras, um, have formed some significant connections and relationships since we started the eclipses on Aries and Libra. And now Pluto in the um, Aquarius in your fifth house brings this massive transformation. So very um, what I've seen is that many Libras have met um, very different kind of individuals, different to the individuals that they have been attracted to before. So it's very different energy. Here, Pluto brings transformation when it comes to your taste, but essentially when it comes to the romantic partners. Romantically, you might also go under this massive shift and transformation. Your approach to love and romance is also undergoing this major shift with this transit and the notes and eclipses triggering uh, your seventh house in the first. Right. Now, Pluto in the fifth house uh, also brings a lot of transformation when it comes to your children. So your children might be going through big and transformative events and energies as well as this transit occurs. It doesn't have to be anything dramatic, but generally life changes and big life changes for your children as well. Now here we are also dealing with self-expression. So when Pluto is retrograde, this is when we step back and we see our romantic side or romantic life from a different angle, perspective, our approach to romance, that creative self-expression. Sometimes the retrograde planets can slow down our progress only to make us more aware of anything that needs our attention. So perhaps you will be changing the way you express yourself 
not immediately, by the way. It's an it's it's a process. But um I think this could be connected to you wanting to be more of your authentic self. Pluto doesn't like superficiality. Pluto likes real, real things. And if you felt like you've been kind of um, limiting yourself, if, if something or someone was blocking you and made it kind of difficult to be your true self or express yourself truly authentically, Pluto retrograde will help you work on these tendencies and qualities that uh, generally make you um, kind of shrink. So here Pluto is all about um, self-empowerment, self-empowering energies. So Pluto will also show you where you need to grow, where you still need to um, evolve in order to feel fully fulfilled in your life when it comes to your creative self-expression, when it comes to even your skills, your talents. But at the same time, it can bring some really transformative experiences in your romantic side of life. So you will learn these lessons uh, during um, experiences that may lead to any potential tendencies towards power struggles or perhaps obsessive compulsive behavioral patterns. Now, this is also when you will be taking a closer look at your parenting style. So there's some kind of transformation going on as well in this area of life. All right, so I'll leave it to you for now. And let's move on to the new moon in Taurus happening on the 7th, 8th of the month. A new moon in Taurus, so this is a fixed new moon. We had the, the, the Scorpion Taurus eclipses uh, between 2021, 2023. They are now over. So now here you're starting a brand new cycle here. A new moon in Taurus at 18 degrees, a similar degree to Jupiter in Uranus conjunction from the 21st of April that took place at 21 degrees. So I think this new moon might trigger a little bit that conjunction. And that's your eighth house, the area of transformation and regeneration as well. Anything to do with investments, anything to do with money that comes through investment, bonuses, commissions, inheritance even as well. So here a new moon is about new beginnings. We've got a Uranus conjunction here at this point as well. And I think for many Libras, this is also about um, healing or freeing yourself from any negative habits, negative energies, negative influences. This is about breaking free and perhaps incorporating a more of an unconventional, unique way to heal, to overcome certain difficult issues in your life as well. So with um, Uranus influence, Uranus, Uranus is also connected to technology, um, internet media. Perhaps you will, some of you will get involved in stock market, shares. This is the area of uh, ch the chart that deals with money that don't come through regular and monthly income. This is the money that we earn through any investments, shares. So here, maybe this could be about some new beginnings in this um, matter. I think this could be very much connected to, to money, to finances, to having to cover some specific fee, um, fees. But at the same time, maybe this is a brand new chapter when it comes to you being able to earn additional income apart from your regular uh, monthly, weekly uh, week, uh, income, for example. And having said that, maybe this is about a different approach, new and unconventional ways to make money or perhaps save money or heal as well. Now on the 23rd, we've got a full moon in Sagittarius happening at two degrees. In your third house of communication, short distance travel, siblings, your involvement within your community, speech, voice, studying, learning, working with your hands. This is all really highlighted. Sagittarius is a, a fire sign, a mutable energy as well. And here this um, beautiful full moon 
is sextile Pluto in your fifth house? So the area that we discussed earlier where Pluto is retrograde at this point, the area of romance, children, creative self-expression. The full moon in the third house. A full moon occurs when the sun and the moon are in opposition. So the opposing sign signs, it's a second degree of Sagittarius, so an early degree of a full moon indicates um, that perhaps you'll be taking a fresh approach when it comes to a certain matter. Perhaps this is about something uh, that may come up, something fresh. There's some kind of fresh and new energy here, but the whole situation or dynamics are related to a story that started around 18 months ago, most likely. A full moon is not about new beginnings, but with that early degree of Sagittarius, this tells us about something fresh, a fresh approach, for example, or a different mindset. Since we are dealing with the energy of our mind here, communication, voice, speech. So here, this area generally, this could be about revealing some something that was hidden, something that you were unaware of. That's the full moon, full awareness, full clarity in the third house. Maybe this is about some news that you will receive. But since we've got a beautiful sextile to Pluto, this is connected to something empowering. Maybe this is connected to a new contract, a new client, if you're a freelancer or self-employed. Maybe this is connected to a major project being completed and ready to release. Remember, this is the third house. Our business is also highlighted here, our website. And with the fifth house uh, connection, maybe this is about uh, launching a specific goal, project, uh, product, uh, project um, of some sort. But this could be also about receiving some important news, perhaps connected to your work, connected to your um, employment, for instance. So here under that Sagittarian energy, it's all about being adaptable, flexible as well, having this flexible and adaptable, adaptable approach. But at the same time, the ruler of this full moon, Jupiter, is at a very final degree of um, Taurus. And that 29 degree is so-called a critical degree, which I actually made a video about a few months ago. And a critical degree tells us, especially during a lunation, about this now or never feeling. There is this feeling of urgency, impatience even as well. Perhaps you have to decide between two different scenarios, or perhaps you have to make an important decision or complete a specific project before you can move to the next phase of your life or stage. We will look at it more in depth in a few weeks. Now, the final transit for today that I wanted to discuss is Jupiter moving into Gemini on the 25th of May until June the 9th, 2025. So pretty much 12 months of uninterrupted stay in your ninth house. Jupiter in the ninth house can bring travel, foreign travel is very, very much um, the case here. So at least one foreign trip meaningful travel. Here with Jupiter in the ninth house, you seek experiences that will help you to broaden your horizons, broaden your wisdom, expand your wisdom even. So it's all about seeking this, these expansive and, and eye-opening experiences that will help you to expand your worldview. Now, it's a really beautiful energy because Jupiter is the traditional ruler of Sagittarius, which is traditionally connected to the ninth house. And uh, with Jupiter here, this could be about uh, a new career related to teaching, coaching, for example. Perhaps uh, you are entering a new course of study or a university, uh, starting a university degree, a college, postgraduate, MBA. Jupiter is connected to higher learning. Jupiter is connected uh, to expansion. So yes, growth, this is definitely possible. Maybe you're entering a career that um, will take you uh, abroad or on a global scale. There are so many possibilities here. Maybe you, you will uh, get your citizenship as well during this time. You live in a foreign country. It's an amazing uh, time to, to generally pursue new hobbies, new interests, especially the ones that will help you to grow professionally, uh, emotionally and that will broaden your horizons as well. I'll remain realistic and, and grounded because it's uh, very easy to get carried away and have unrealistic expectations with Jupiter in any house. All right, so thank you very much and let's move into the next sign. Hello Scorpius and welcome to your May 2024 horoscope. So this month your ruler, Pluto, your modern ruler, 
will stage in retrograde on May the 2nd until October the 11th. This retrograde will begin at two degrees in Aquarius and it will end in Capricorn. This, is, this will be the final re-entry of Pluto into Capricorn and then Pluto will stay in Aquarius for the next 20 years. So this is happening in your fourth house. The fourth house deals with our family, our roots, our domestic life, emotional side of life as well. Pluto is connected to transformation, regeneration, death and rebirth energy as per that Scorpio energy as well. So here with Pluto retrograde in the fourth house, you might have this really strong desire to connect with your roots to explore your family history. You might find yourself drawn to old um, family photos, albums. You might have this strong need to understand your past, your family uh, history, but also for many, this could mean that you will also want to have a DNA test, learn more about your heritage, about where you come from. This, this retrograde is also amazing for working on past wounds, on past traumas, especially the ones that affect your relationships today with your family members. Now, on May the 7th, 8th, we've got a new moon happening in the sign of Taurus. Taurus is a fixed Earth sign, and this new moon is happening at 18 degrees of Taurus. Now, here in the last couple of years, we had eclipses on Taurus and Scorpio axis uh, between 2021 2023. Now, these eclipses ended last year, and here, this month, we've got a brand new story starting in your area of one-to-one -one connections. Now, this could be connected to a new collaboration, new partnership, a new connection, a new friendship, maybe a new relationship even, or a new contract. So there are endless possibilities here, as long as it's a one-to-one -one connection. We've got Uranus tightly aligned with this uh, new moon. And Uranus is connected to rebellious energy that brings unexpected, sudden, unforeseen event situations as well. So expect the unexpected. But at the same time, with Uranus being involved, this could be about breaking away from something stagnant. Now, if you feel like your relationship has been stuck in the root, Uranus will want to shake things up. Well, it has been already for quite some time, of course, since it entered this area of life. But with this new moon, so some new beginnings, so maybe these new beginnings, a new chapter in your relationship or a new connection will either happen unexpectedly or perhaps it's going to be about a new and unconventional uh, connection in your life. Because Uranus um, doesn't like um, anything connected to stagnant energy, monotony. Uranus likes to shake things up. So here, I think this is a very interesting new moon because uh, the moon in uh, Taurus is very comfortable. It is exalted, in fact. And we also have Uranus here and Jupiter is still in Taurus. Venus is in Taurus. I think this is a beautiful new moon for these one-to-one -one connections, relationships even. It's a good time for dating if you're single as well. Venus in the seventh house can attract love into your life. If you want to go on a date, then Venus in Taurus transit in your seventh house. This is a time for doing so. We've got a new moon here, Uranus, Jupiter. This is an amazing time for going on a date. But other, other than that, maybe if you will be out and about and... um participating in a special, in a certain social event, this could be also about making a new connection. If it's not love, this could be a new partnership, collaboration, a new friend, something of a stronger nature, something that would have a long lasting influence since this is a fixed um, new moon. A fixed new moon has a long lasting outcome. Now on this 23rd, we've got a full moon in Sagittarius happening uh, in your area of the second house. So your finances are here very much highlighted. A full moon brings clarity, full awareness, and it turns your attention onto, onto your financial area of life. Any instability, any inconsistency will 
impact your emotional well-being at this point. Now, it's a very early degree, so this could be about a fresh approach, a fresh mindset regarding a specific financial decision you want to make or take or an, any financial trans transaction you want to make, uh, for example, or any financial matter you will be dealing with, whatever it is here. A full moon is connected to a story, most likely, that started about 18 months ago during the new moon in Sagittarius in December, around December 2022. So think about uh, what happened in your life around that time. This will be significant. Uh, that will be around December uh, 2022 during Sagittarius season. And this can give you uh, November, December uh, 2022. This can give you a better idea of what you could possibly be dealing with around this new full moon. We've got an early degree, as I said, and then we've got a ruler of this full moon, uh, Jupiter. It's an analytic degree of um, Taurus, conjunct Venus. I think it's amazing. So hopefully some good news regarding uh, your income. Maybe it will be about a beautiful gift something of value, something meaningful. Maybe you will be treating yourself. Maybe there could be some financial opportunity coming your way, a new client or a contract. Whatever it is, the energies are really interesting. And also there is this now or never feeling. So there is a little bit of that risky energy as well. Having to deal with a certain matter immediately before it's too late. That's the, that's the energetic degree influence. Okay, so moving forward, we've got Jupiter uh, moving into Gemini on the 25th of May until June the 9th, 2025. And that's your eighth house. The eighth house deals with anything to do with um, money that comes through different sources than your regular income, any gains through investments or perhaps inheritance uh, or any bonuses, commissions, uh, shares, uh, stock market, this this kind of dynamics uh, are highlighted. Jupiter is connected to growth, expansion, abundance. When Jupiter is in the eighth house, this can positively influence your financial area of life. You could experience financial gains through any sales, through any investments, for example, through inheritance. Now, if you are in a, a relationship in a solid relationship, Jupiter in the eighth house will also help you to grow uh, financially through partnerships or through rela relationships. So perhaps your partner might be going through a really abundant uh, financial phase um, in their life. And uh, so, yeah, so this could mean financial growth in joint and shared resources as well. Or perhaps this could be about joining forces with another especially since we've got this lovely new moon in Taurus with Uranus involved in the uh, on the 7th, 8th of uh, the month, then Jupiter in the 8th. So for some Scorpio rising individuals, this could be about uh, some fruitful um, partnerships, collaborations that you might be entering um, in the very near future that could help you to grow financially. Jupiter in Gemini in your 8th house can also help you to deepen your understanding of anything to do with spirituality, anything to do with healing, anything to do with uh, deep, profound uh, matters, topics, um, death after life after death as well. Thank you very much, Scorpius. I wish you a productive and a great month. And let's move into the next sign. Hello, Sagittarius, and welcome to your May 2024 horoscope. So here, this month, Pluto will station retrograde on the 2nd of May at 2 degrees of Aquarius until October the 11th. Now, Pluto is a dwarf uh, planet, the modern ruler of Scorpio, and it is currently transiting your third house. Now, bear in mind that this retrograde starts in Aquarius, it will end in Capricorn, and that will be the final entry or re-entry of um, Pluto into Capricorn. After that, Pluto will stay in Aquarius for the next 20 years. Right, so this is your third house. The third house deals with communication, our mind, rational thinking, judgment, uh, anything to do with um, documents, learning. And overall, this is the area of life that deals with our immediate environment, that deals with short distance travel as well. Now, with Pluto being retrograde uh, here for the next few months, during this time, you might have this really st strong urge to explore the intellectual side of your psyche and perhaps expand your knowledge especially about a specific topic that you feel like you don't have enough knowledge about. Your proto in Aquarius gives you this amazing opportunity to slow down, 
to take a step back and see what needs to be improved in the area of communication, what needs to be improved, changed, modified in the area of learning, studying. So this could be a great time for Take, to take some time to perhaps revisit some courses, uh, short courses, uh, or any learning materials about a specific topic that you have been dealing with in the last uh, couple of months. Now, on a different level, this is also a great transit or a retrograde to improve your communication skills, especially if you work or are involved in careers related to communication, writing, for instance, presenting work in some verbal uh, way. You might find yourself drawn to books, podcasts, um, online courses during this time, especially the ones that challenge your thinking, that push you out of your comfort zone. Now, this is also a fantastic time for developing your communication skills, both in your personal and professional life. You might find it easier to express your ideas, to express your deep thoughts and opinions. However, it's really important uh, that you watch out for any tendencies connected to trying to dominate the conversation or perhaps dismiss other people's perspectives. This kind of dynamics could come up. That's, they don't have to, but they might um, show up or come up during the duration of this retrograde. Because this kind of experiences will especially remind you about active listening, about approaching um, conversations, discussions with an open mind. Now here on the 7th, 8th, we've got a new moon in Taurus uh, happening in your area of the 6th house. So this is the area that is uh, connected to our daily life, daily routine, daily responsibilities, your lifestyle, your work, co-workers, anything to do with any illnesses as well. So here with a new moon, in Taurus at 18 degrees. Taurus is a fixed sign. So a fixed lunation has long lasting influence and outcomes. It's an amazing, amazing new moon for setting intentions. It can show first concrete results and outcomes in about nine months during the first quarter moon. Now, recently we had the Jupiter and Uranus conjunction in Taurus at 21 degrees in this area of your life. Now, this new moon is happening at 18 degrees so it can trigger it can trigger some of the energies of that conjunction and at the same time we have just recently finished also a cycle between of eclipses between Taurus and Scorpio so this is a brand new story here a brand new chapter maybe a brand new routine a brand new uh, daily routine perhaps you'll be restructuring your um, daily um, reality in some way simplifying your life perhaps you want to be more organized perhaps you want to be more productive moving forward here there's an opportunity for doing so now you've got a conjunct we've got a conjunction to Uranus in Taurus at this point as well Uranus will help you to break away from any habits, routines that no longer belong in your life or your reality. Uranus is connected to revolution. Uranus is connected to shaking things up, especially if you feel like your daily life has become overly monotonous, stagnant even. Now, at the same time, this could be also connected to some surprising news, ideas, goals related to your employment. Perhaps a, an unexpected job opportunity or an interview could be also the case for some Sagittarius rising individuals. Maybe this is about a new diet, a new approach to your diet, something more unconventional maybe even. Now on the 23rd, on the other hand, uh, we've got um, a full moon in Sagittarius as your first house. And this is happening at two degrees of Sagittarius. A full moon is connected to a story that would have already started in the past. Think about what happened in your life around 18 months prior to this full moon, because this will give you a hint of what you may possibly expect to happen around this full moon. Sagittarius is connected to adventurous, spontaneous, eye-opening energy as well. Now, a full moon brings a matter into light, something connected to you, to your goals, to your identity. Maybe during this time, you will have this strong need to, to change your beauty routine or your daily routine, your lifestyle, even to a little extent, something that could generally help you to feel more self-empowered. We've got a sex cell to Pluto in Aquarius, which is now retrograde. 
Maybe you are returning to an idea that you didn't fulfill in the past. That's the retrograde energy here from the third house of your mind, your voice, speech, communication. Now, maybe you will be redefining yourself, your identity, your um, persona, your... Well, you could be more aware of um, how you are perceived by others, how you are seen in, in the public eye. Now, having said that, maybe you have a need to change your style. Maybe you have a need to change your uh, beauty routine or maybe your hairstyle. So you could be implemented in implementing these kind of changes with maybe for some, this could be the case, since the full moon here in the first house bring, brings full awareness. And very often with full moon in the first house, we become more aware of our selves, of our identity, of our physicality even. So if you are dissatisfied, with something in your physical appearance, then this full moon will make it more apparent. So there is a certain degree of um, that transformative energy that generally can help you to move away from something or someone that uh, disempowers you in some way. The ruler of this full moon is Jupiter, also your ruler, of course. And Jupiter is at the final degree of Taurus, about to move into Gemini, but still at that anoretic 29th degree conjunct Venus. Beautiful conjunction, amazing abundant energy. Venus in Taurus feels fantastic as well. So this is a really good, uh, a good sign for something positive. But with that anoretic degree, you might feel like you're running out of time. You need to accomplish this goal objective as soon as possible before it's too late. Now here on the 25th, on the other hand, Jupiter will move into your seventh house, into Gemini, where it will remain until this, this the 9th of June, 2025. Now here we've got uh, more or less 20, um, 12 months of, a, of an uninterrupted stay in the sign of Gemini. Jupiter in Gemini in your seventh house. I've actually just gone through this transit. And let me tell you, it's really important to know where, at which degree your descendant is. Because uh, usually when Jupiter crosses the important angles in our life, this is when things happen, things occur. So that's on a side note. But overall, Jupiter in the seventh house, this could be about a foreign trip, a vacation, a holiday with someone close to your heart, whether this is your friend, whether this is your partner, but the Jupiter is connected to foreign matters. So you might be traveling abroad. That was the case for me. I went to Barcelona uh, to celebrate my friend's 40th last year, as soon as uh, that uh, Jupiter moved into Taurus, you know, to my seventh house. So a foreign trip. Now here, Jupiter in the seventh house uh, didn't uh, really expand my social circle. Jupiter bring, can bring a few individuals into your life that can generally um, align with your uh, belief system, with your values. And Jupiter can definitely attract new people uh, into your life who are uh, supportive, who are like-minded, who are positive influence. So that was definitely the case for me. Jupiter attracted a lot of positive influences, not necessarily uh, strong and uh, new connections, but positive influences, harmonious influences into my life. It's really important not to become overly dependent on other people's presence for your own happiness. It's important to still um, maintain your independence, cultivate your independence, while still being open to, to receiving. Overall, here with Jupiter in the seventh house, uh, new opportunities come through collaboration, partnership, joining forces with other people through connections. And there could be some really abundant and fruitful connection that end, connections that enter your life during this time. As well, maybe a foreign contract, so an opportunity to, to um, live abroad or move abroad or work abroad or something with foreign people or foreign place is here also highlighted during this transit. Thank you very much. And let's move into the next sign. Hello, Capricorns, and welcome to your May 2024 horoscope. So here we start with Pluto stationing retrograde in Aquarius on the 2nd of May until October the 11th. This retrograde starts at two degrees of Aquarius and 
it will end in the sign of Capricorn and the final degrees of Capricorn. But this will be the final, the final re-entry, or that will be the final re-entry of Pluto into Capricorn. After that, we've got 20 years of um Pluto and Aquarius transit in your second house. So this is means some massive transformative changes when it comes to your financial area of life. And these won't happen instantly. It's a gradual process. Pluto is an outer dwarf planet. It takes some time to go through the whole of the zodiac. In this case scenario, it will be around 20 years. So Overall, you might find yourself during this time re-evaluating your relationship with your money. You will be taking steps to better manage your money, your finances. And this could involve um, budgeting, paying off your debts, or perhaps exploring new sources of income. So this is a time to make an impulsive financial decisions or changes. It's a time to be responsible and to make some concrete and long-lasting decisions during this time. During this time, you might be also reflecting on your values, on your priorities, and perhaps you'll be considering how they align with your financial goals. The 7th, 8th of May, on the other hand, we've got a new moon in Taurus. Taurus uh, is an Earth sign, same as Capricorn, a fixed sign as well. So a fixed lunation indicates long-lasting outcomes and results. We've got Uranus in Taurus tightly aligned with this new moon. So expect the unexpected during this time. Now, Uranus uh, likes to shake things up, especially in the area where... Things are stagnant and monotonous. So overall here, there is this amazing opportunity for starting something brand new. We've just finished the um, eclipses cycle between Taurus and Scorpio that lasted between 2021, 2023. And now with this new moon in Taurus at 18 degrees, you have an opportunity to start something fresh and new. In the area of self-expression, creativity, freelancing, children, family planning, romance as well. So there is this amazing opportunity here with this new moon for growth in your area of self-expression, creativity, uh, romance and children. Now with Uranus involved, perhaps you have this strong need to break free, break away from any old patterns or some old beliefs around uh, your creative self-expression your interaction with children, the romantic side of your life. Maybe a time has come for you to implement something fresh, something new, a different approach to your parenting style. Maybe a more unconventional approach to your romantic side of life. Maybe you want to be more authentic when it comes to that self-expression. Maybe this is about a new business, a new opportunity for becoming a freelancer or someone self-employed. Maybe you have this strong need to generally have more fun in your life, to enjoy life and uh, on a bigger scale. Maybe this is about fun, recreation as well. Some new beginnings in this area of life, maybe a new hobby, maybe a new interest. Some Generally something that could help you to be your true self, something that could help you to be your true authentic self as well. So keep an eye for new opportunities because whatever plans that you see around this time, they will show the first substantial results and outcomes in about nine months during the first quarter moon in Taurus. So really interesting energies. Think about that Jupiter and Uranus conjunction from the 21st of April because this full, this new moon will be at 18 degrees of uh, Taurus. is within a close orb to that uh, conjunction. And I think this new one will also influence those energies from April in some way as well. Now on the 23rd, we've got a full moon in Sagittarius and a full moon occurs when the sun and the moon are in opposition in the opposing sign. So we've got a full moon here in your 12th house. Full moon brings a full moon brings full awareness, full clarity about something that perhaps was hidden, something that wasn't fully understood, especially since Mercury is so out of its post-shadow period that ended on the 13th of May. Now, this is connected to your 12th house. So the 12th house um, is related to hidden matters, uh, the private area of life. And during this time, especially since we've got a sextile to Pluto and Aquarius in your, in your second house, so maybe some hidden emotions, some hidden desires co could come to the surface around this new uh, full moon. This could be a time of uh, some great transformation, in your inner world, in your private life, as long as you are open to changes. 
happening around this time. We've got a sextile to Pluto in um, the second house. I think maybe this full moon could be about healing some uh, energies, um, wounds, traumas, potentially, um, that uh, affect your ability to um, be confident, that affect your self-worth and self-esteem. There is a certain degree of some kind of empowering energy as well. Perhaps during this full moon, you will be eliminating these blockages, healing, so that you can feel more self-empowered. And maybe the, this is also about healing your relationship or some kind of misconception surrounded around the money or your ability to earn money, your ability to be successful. Jupiter, the ruler of this uh, full moon, is at, at an analytic degree of Taurus, 29 degrees of Taurus, conjunct Venus, a beautiful conjunction, amazing, abundant energy. However, the analytic degree suggests that there is this feeling like you are running out of time, a feeling of urgency, of, of feeling of having to attend to a certain matter connected to that subconscious energy, hidden private area of life, maybe some addictions that you're trying to move away from, habits, negative habits. So it's it's uh, this feeling of urgency, having to accomplish this uh, goal idea as soon as possible before it's too late. Now, at the same time, perhaps this is about fixing your sleeping routine, being more open to, to spirituality and, and healing as well. Now, on the 25th, we've got uh, Jupiter moving into Gemini, a big, big transit of 2024. Jupiter changes signs every single year. This time around, this is, this is an uninterrupted stay in Gemini until June the 9th to 2025, right? So here, Gemini, this is your sixth house. So Jupiter brings growth, expansion, abundance. It can bring out a fortunate, fortunate energy as long as you are real, realistic about your expectations, as long as you are grounded. So there could be some uh, potentially opportunities uh, for moving up in your work um, ladder or work environment. That's definitely the case here. Perhaps you'll be working abroad, traveling abroad, so business trips, so working with um, people from foreign places, foreign countries, for, for a global organization. So there is an element of something foreign here, without a doubt. This will be also about um, attracting um, people into your life who will help you to get back on track to, in terms of your work, in terms of what you want to do or should do if you're confused about which direction to take. Jupiter will help you to make the right decision regarding your work. Maybe this is about entering a brand new career. Especially since you've got the eclipses now this year in your career area. You've got two, two eclipses in your career area and one eclipse in your home area. So perhaps Jupiter in the sixth house can really help you professionally. So I think this can really be an interesting uh, energy and also this can influence, uh, positively influence uh, any connections with co-workers. This can help you to attract the right uh, contracts. Uh, and overall here, it's all about uh, also expanding your skills, your talent, simplifying your routine. Here, Jupiter can also help you with productivity, efficiency in your daily life. Maybe this is about lifestyle changes, very possibly. The case. This is the case. Perhaps you'll be changing your diet. Perhaps you could be more attracted to, to different kind of foods or maybe something of a holistic nature, maybe something uh, organic or more organic uh, diets, uh, for instance, as well. And um, this is also about, um, I think, a healthier nutrition. But having said that, with Jupiter, Jupiter also can um, promote the growth of your physical body. Jupiter is connected to fatty, saucy food. Very often with Jupiter in the sixth house, um, we can generally gain weight very easily, or there is some kind of imbalance when it comes to weight, so it can go up and down. It's very often it's difficult to, to it's stable and steady because of our food cravings that might come up every now and then, especially cravings related to these saucy and fatty foods. So that's on a side note. Uh, if you know about this uh, influence, uh, then you can control it. That's why uh, we love astrology, don't we? 
But uh, other than that, um, I'll explore this further and in a few weeks. Uh, in the meantime, have a good month and let's move into the next sign. Hello Aquarius and welcome to your May 2024 horoscope and here this month Pluto will station retrograde at the very very beginning as we begin the month, the new month on the 2nd of May at 2 degrees of Aquarius and this retrograde will last until October the 11th and it will end in Capricorn. So we start in Aquarius, we end in Capricorn but that will be the final re-entry of Pluto into Capricorn. Later when Pluto is in Aquarius, it will stay there or here in your sign for the next 20 years. So a very long transit, a very long transit that brings a lot of transformation, a regeneration as well. And that's your first house. The first house is deals with our identity, our persona, our outside persona, our physical body as well, our well-being. It tells us about how we are seen and perceived by others. So lots of transformative changes here with Pluto in your first house, without a doubt. Especially pay attention when Pluto will reach your angle, ascendant, ascendant angle, because this will be a really important phase in your life as well. Now here, Pluto retrograde. Uh, Pluto retrograde, Pluto is a, tra a planet connected to transformation, regeneration, and it's it's an outer planet, uh, traditional, uh, modern, sorry, modern ruler of uh, Scorpio, a dwarf planet. Now here, Pluto retrograde can bring a period of transformation, self-discovery as well. You might find yourself examining your identity, your sense of self, and you might be questioning whether it aligns uh, with your core values. If it doesn't, then you will be, you will be implementing some important changes. Now, this tra this retrograde can also bring uh, potentially uh, power struggles with others, especially in personal relationships, because let's not forget, Pluto in Aquarius in your first house is opposing your seven house dynamics. So it's really important during this time to just stay grounded, to stay realistic, but at the same time, don't let your emotions take over or take control of you. Be in control of your emotions during this time. This is a time of introspection, but it's a really important time for self-care, self-discovery. Also, it, it will be really essential or useful to dedicate some time during this retrograde phase towards finding a healthy balance between your personal needs and the needs of those around you. Now, between the 7th and the 8th, we've got a new moon in Taurus. Taurus is a fixed sign, same as Aquarius. Taurus is an earth sign as well. A lunation in a fixed sign indicates long-lasting outcomes and results. Between 2021 and 2023, we had a series of eclipses in Taurus and Scorpio. We They ended last year in uh, November, October, November. And now in May, you're starting a brand new chapter, a brand new story in your area of home. Now, we've just also had a uh, conjunction between Uranus and Jupiter here, and now a new moon at 18 degrees of Taurus. We also have a conjunction to Uranus. Uranus is here, Jupiter is still here. So generally here, if you feel like your home and home situation, your family situation, if there is something that was some energy that was kind of stagnant, if you feel like your home life is, things are not moving forward. If, if you feel like you're stuck and things are generally stagnant and monotonous, Uranus will shake things up and will generally make you move away or drift away from something that fulfills its purpose. So while a new moon is about new beginnings um, here in the area of home, whether you're planning a renovation, when you're, you're planning a relocation, whether someone is moving in, moving out, or perhaps you're buying new furniture or you just moved in into a new place recently, whatever it is, a Uranus, Sh will shake things up. Whatever the scenario with uh, the new moon in Taurus in your fourth house and Uranus conjunction, this is about uh, that need to break free from old patterns connected to your home and family dynamics. Maybe even traditions, beliefs around your home and family. And perhaps the time has come to explore something new, innovative, perhaps a more 
innovative approach to your home life, to your emotional well-being as well. Maybe the time has come to seek new living arrangements. Whatever happens during this time, this is a time of some new and fresh energies connected to some new beginnings related to your home and family dynamics. Now on the 23rd, we've got a full moon in Sagittarius happening at two degrees of Sagittarius. So an early degree of a full moon happening in your 11th house uh, means that perhaps uh, you might change your mind about something connected to your long-term goals, hopes, dreams, or maybe a certain connection in your life. Maybe it's about a fresh mind mindset, fresh approach, a new idea. But at the same time, a full moon is about having this stronger and heightened awareness of something that has already been an ongoing situation. Now think about what happened in your life around 18 months ago during uh, the new moon in Sagittarius that happened uh, around November, December 2022. This is very significant because during this full moon, you might be dealing with similar people, situations, energies. Now, your 11th house deals with your friendships, or gr the groups that you belong to, your social life and circle, but as also your involvement in a certain organization, perhaps. Also, this is connected to your long-term goals, hopes, plans, dreams for the future. We've got a sextile to Pluto in Aquarius happening. Pluto is retrograde in your first house. I think this could be about a certain degree of fulfillment during this time that you might experience. Maybe this will be when you will reach some substantial goals and objectives that you've been trying to reach for quite some time. Maybe this is about an opportunity to work for a specific organization or to participate, take part in a specific project that would involve um, it, a teamwork. Now, on a different level, this could be about you shifting away, moving away from a certain friendship connection in your life. Maybe this is about discovering something you were unaware of. That's a full moon energy. Now, the, the ruler of this full moon is Jupiter, and Jupiter is at an, an erratic degree, 29th degree of Taurus, conjunct Venus. These are really beautiful and abundant energies. But the erratic degree of Taurus signifies that feeling of running out of time, that feeling of urgency. Maybe this full moon will present an opportunity connected to a certain group, friendship, connection, anything to do with your goals and hopes for the future. And you will have to make a quick decision. Take it or leave it. So this could be also the way this full moon could play out in your life. Now, I think generally the full moon brings a lot of clarity and awareness, especially here in 11th house. In 11th house is connected to our involvement with other people as working towards a common um, goal with um, in a group uh, environment of some sort. And a full moon is usually a peak of a situation or a time of conclusion. A sextile to Pl Pluto brings a certain degree of empowerment, but there is this feeling of urgency of having to attend to a specific matter, goal, objective quickly before it's too late. Now, on the 25th, Jupiter will move into Gemini, where it will remain until the 9th of June, 2025. So we've got the fifth house being activated here. The fifth house deals with children, romance, creative self-expression. Jupiter here brings a lot of abundant um, energy that will promote growth. With Jupiter overall in the fifth house, this is likely to be a time, especially at least a few weeks uh, during this uh, 12 months of this transit, when you will experience a lot of joy, opportunities for fun, recreation as well. The fifth house also deals with uh, that need for fun, entertainment, and Jupiter will bring opportunities for you to really enjoy life, especially since Pluto in the first house in Aquarius may have brought a lot of transformation, a lot of seriousness, deep energy. Jupiter will help you to loosen up, relax, and engage in activities of a spontaneous, adventurous nature. Maybe this could be about some foreign trips, holidays as well, which you'll be enjoying around this time. Now, at the same time, maybe this will be also when you will be expanding your family, conception, children, family planning is really highlighted here as well as the need to express yourself creatively, new hobbies, new interests, 
this is an amazing time for starting new uh, interests, new hobbies. Maybe this is about a new business idea, freelancing, new projects, new goals. Overall here, it's all about being realistic about your expectations, about your goals. And this way you can really reach the stars with Jupiter transit in your fifth house. It's a really fun transit. The fifth house is, is the house of recreation, fun, creativity. With this transit, you can be your true self. You can express yourself truly and authentically. And Jupiter will help you to feel more confident about your skills, about your abilities as well. And on this note, thank you very much. I wish you a productive month and let's move to the next sign. Hello Pisces and welcome to your May 2024 horoscope and here this month Pluto, the planet of transformation, regeneration, is going to station retrograde at two degrees of Aquarius on the 2nd of May. This retrograde will end in October on the 11th in the sign of Capricorn and this will be the final, that will be the final re-entry of Pluto into Capricorn. After that Pluto will stay in Aquarius for about 20 years. This is your 12th house. Pluto retrograde. Pluto is the planet connected to transformation, regeneration. This is the modern ruler of Scorpio. And here Pluto takes a long time to transit each degree of each zodiac. When Pluto is retrograde, the energy is more introspective. And this is your 12th house of the subconscious mind of ending spirituality. With Pluto retrograde in your 12th house, Pluto retrograde here can bring up issues related to subconscious, subconscious fears, hidden desires, or perhaps unresolved feelings, emotions, traumas. The retrograde motion of Pluto can also lead to a greater need for withdrawal from the outside world in order to concentrate on your private life your mental health as well, especially if you experience or if you are experiencing mental health issues. Pluto retrograde can also mean uh, that you will have this massive and strong desire for a self-discovery on a very, very deep level. It could mean that you will become really, really interested, even obsessed with spirituality, astrology. You might also have this really strong desire to explore the depths of the human psyche. So it's really important to approach this retrograde phase of Pluto with uh, self-awareness, compassion, and a willingness to confront your fears, your phobias, the insecurities that may come up as well, in order to help you transform them to sources of strength, of wisdom. Now, on the 7th, 8th of May, we've got a new moon in Taurus happening at 18 degrees of Taurus. Taurus is a fixed earth sign. A new moon is about new beginnings, something fresh and new. We've just finished the eclipses on the Taurus and Scorpio axis that lasted between 2021 and 2023. So here, the Taurus, that's your third house. The third house deals with communication, short distance travel, our rational mind, learning, studying, our community, our life within our community, our siblings. So here with a new moon, this is about a new chapter, new beginnings, new course of study, anything to do with speech, uh, business, website, news as well, a new contract, a driving license, a trip that you might be taking. Maybe this is about some new beginnings in your sibling's life or perhaps some new neighbors even moving into your neighborhood. This could be about some changes in your neighborhood, in your town, within your, within your town. And that could potentially um, maybe bring some disruption during the day, during the initial days of May. So it's about um, incorporating, this is about incorporating an, a flexible and an adaptable approach during this time because we've got a conjunction to Uranus in Taurus. Uranus in Taurus is connected to the unexpected and the unforeseen energies. So perhaps this could be about some brilliant new and innovative ideas that you will be implementing into your life around this time. So pay attention to your thoughts. I think your intuition will be very strong around this time. Now, you might be also getting a new electronic device around this time. Uranus is connected to media technology, so this could be very much the case. It could be about a new connection, perhaps a new friendship with someone from your community. Maybe this could be with someone who is different, unconventional, unique, original in their way of being. Maybe you're starting a new podcast during this time. 
maybe you're launching a new business or a website or a YouTube channel. I think many Pisces rising individuals will have a strong need to express themselves in some way. Express your ideas, share your ideas with others. It's an amazing new moon to start something connected to internet, working online, so as I said, podcast, uh, blog, something that could help you to share your knowledge, your wisdom with others. You might have this need to be heard during this time. At the same time with Uranus, it's all about unexpected, unforeseen, maybe getting out of your comfort zone, maybe doing things differently. Now on the 23rd, we've got a full moon in Sagittarius happening in your 10th house of career, professional life growth and development and your public status, public image. So here, this full moon is um, going to bring a certain situation connected to your career, your outside world to light. We've got a sextile to Pluto in Aquarius happening as well. In your 12th house, Pluto is retrograde at this point, of course. This full moon is happening at a very early degree of Sagittarius, at two degrees. So this indicates something fresh, a new idea, a new approach. And the ruler of this full moon is at 29 degrees of Taurus. This is Jupiter, conjunct Venus, beautiful, abundant energy, connected to opportunities, positive, positive, abundant um, influences as well. So this could be about some transformative changes taking place in your career. Maybe this is about being recognized, noticed for your achievements. Maybe this is about some major changes and announcements happening in your organization around this time. So here, whatever the changes around this time that occur in your outside world, maybe this is about your status, maybe you're getting married, engaged, maybe you're entering a partnership or becoming a parent around this time. So whatever the scenario, the sextile to Pluto and Aquarius in your 12th house indicates that this full moon is connected to to your subconscious or hidden desires. Now, this full moon also indicates that you are experiencing a sense of uh, completion, a sense of culmination. Perhaps you're gaining a deeper understanding of your motivations, of the next step you want to take or you should take in your outside world, in your professional life. We end the month with Jupiter moving into Gemini on the 25th, and this transit will last until June the 9th. So here, that's your fourth house. Jupiter is connected to growth, abundance, expansion. With Jupiter in the fourth house of home and family dynamics, you might be literally craving more space. And very often with Jupiter, people very often, they have a desire to live in a bigger home to expand their current home or maybe this is about generally implementing whatever you can to for your inner world for your home space to feel more spacious so perhaps you will become a minimalist if at this point in your life you can't make any major changes if you can't make any uh, expand your home or relocate to a bigger space maybe you will be decluttering maybe you will be eliminating um, anything that you no longer need in order to gain more space but overall jupiter in the fourth house this is connected to uh, generally wanting more space, craving more space. Maybe your home will be abroad, at least temporarily during this transit. Maybe this will be about having visitors from abroad. Now, this is connected generally to um, expansion. So yes, there could be more people living in your home space during this time. If this isn't connected to you wanting more space or moving into a bigger space, this could be also about having more people literally living in your home space. Jupiter brings a lot of comfort into this area of your life. This will generally positively influence your emotional uh, well-being and happiness. And, and, and generally, it can also increase that um, feeling of stability, emotional fulfillment in the home area as well. So it's a really uplifting energy connected to growth, connected to opportunities as well. And as long as you stay grounded and realistic about your expectations, stay open to any opportunities that come your way. Now, I will explore this transit further and deeper in the upcoming weeks. In the meantime, have a great month and I'll see you soon. Thank you and bye for now.